Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. We're here with a quick uh, review episode. We're going to look at a, um, a video that pertains to the series that we're going through right now. We're basically going through the Seven Mountains of Culture and talking about how the, the church should be uh, that leaven that moves throughout the culture, uh, infiltrates, permeates, and uh, allows the kingdom of God to really cover the earth. Part of that is obviously in the, the realm of uh, political life, in society. And we have a video here from a guy named Alton Williams. He's got a church in, uh, looks like Memphis, Tennessee, uh, World Overcomers Church. And he has a message that I think really resonates, especially going into an election season. And I wanted to use kind of what, what he said as a springboard to comment and say a few things um, as it relates to, again, Christians actually being Christian. It is amazing to me. I had somebody say to me lately, I can't understand how black Christians can go to church every Sunday to worship God, but can still go and vote for homosexuality. Don't make no sense. But I understand that. And the reason is, I'm going to say something that may hurt some people, and I'm going to say it. The reason is, we've known church entity and not real Christianity. There has not been a real, this is not everybody, but this is for a lot of us as African Americans. We don't have a real deep down commitment for Christ. And when that commitment is not there, there's not a fear of the Lord that's there. Whoa, 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 whoa. He is uh, saying some things that, like, again, it's, it's nothing that, uh, that I haven't heard before and that I, I, I've used the word churchianity before, <laughs> actually, and I'm sure lots of people have. It's a very, uh, very uh, simple play on words that I'm sure tons of people say that. But, but looking at the our Western culture, looking at uh, our Western Christianity, what he's saying is true. We don't have a fear of God. We don't have a fear of the Lord. You can do church on Sunday and then be pretty much just like the world. Monday through Saturday, and he is really hitting that hard and, and specifically identifying some of our cultural um, uh, milieu that, that, that a lot of the church accepts. It's like, oh, you know, this is just the way it is, and it's okay to go and vote or promote some of these things that are completely vile and wicked and evil. Oh, well, but I'm a Christian on Sunday, and I worship God on Sunday. Who cares if I vote for the devil on Tuesday? That is... That's not good. That's not good. And it goes completely against the, um, the Bible. It goes completely against the Christian way of life, against being a disciple. And he's really uh, doing a good job calling it out. Which is what we've been talking about on this past Sunday. And so when it's time to go to the polls, you don't care. You don't care about babies being killed anytime unrestricted, any time of the pregnancy. You don't care anything about uh, whether or not uh, gay rights is going to spread and it's going to impact the children and the schools and, and uh, parents and all of that. Uh Let's stop right there. Um, you know, people might say, oh, that's not true. That's not what's going on. Uh, there was a abortion bus at the Democratic National Convention this year. I mean, you know, nestled in between the uh, three for one, you know, tacos and the super sloppy, amazing burger over here. You've got the come get your free abortion. That is how open and crazy it is. That is evil. That's wicked. That is absolute wickedness. And Christians need to be comfortable pointing out wickedness. There's nothing wrong with, the Bible tells us to expose evil, to expose things that are wrong, to, uh, that we should uh, rise up with truth and destroy arguments that are against God. These are all things that are normal for the Christian, for the Christian life. If you go and look at different portions of Scripture, um, the Bible actually says in Revelation, I mean, Jesus is coming in vengeance and literally says, like, the birds of the air like are going to feast on the flesh of his enemies, right? We've got John the Baptist pointing his face, you know, his face, pointing his finger in the face of Herod and calling him out in his sin. You've got Jesus telling Peter, you know, get behind me, Satan. You, Jesus literally said in front of a bunch of people, if someone offends the least of one of these, it would be better for them to have a giant stone hung around their neck and they drown in the sea. I mean, this 
is that not true? It is true. He's calling out wickedness. He's showing that evil is not okay. You go read the book of Proverbs and you cannot come away thinking like we shouldn't, you know, call things out. We should just kind of go along to get along. And this is the kind of thing that has uh, crippled, crippled Christianity in the West in many places, many spheres, many, uh, many of those mountains of society that we once had, the church has sort of retreated down into the valley. And I think, uh, I think he's really doing a great job of calling some of that stuff out. Let's, let's, uh, let's continue. Uh, you don't care nothing about um, the, you know, tax, um, su taxpayer support of sexual transition surgeries. That's what they want. Democratic Party wants to have the right to use your tax dollars to go and cut off the organs of children, and they don't want the parents to be able to have the right to say anything. And you all right with that? You are now, you might say, well, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not all right with that. But what is he saying? You are all right with that if you go and you vote to support that. Again, you throw your vote in with that, you are all right with that. Um, and I, I, I think, again, a lot of times Christians have this, I shouldn't just say Christians, obviously all people have this thing where they can, on one, it's called hypocrisy, but on one hand, you say this or you, you believe this, but on the other hand, but you do this. <laughs> right? This is like Book of James, right? Where he's like, hey, you know, there shouldn't be uh, good water and, and, and bitter water coming out of the same fountain. This ought not to be. Um, and so again, we just have this ability to do that. And he's saying, stop it, knock it off. Your biblical worldview, your Christianity, your love for Christ should lead to a fear of the Lord, obedience to him. And that should lead to actions that support godly things and actions that detract from and try to do away with ungodly things. It's it's really as simple as that. But I think a lot of times we have a we have a great way to uh, you know confuse the issue and uh, make it more complicated than what it really needs to be. Okay with that? Something is wrong with your heart when you know your God is against that. You cannot be a true God-following Christian and go for all of this ungodliness. Mm. Now, I'm going to say it. Just because you want to hold up race. That's what I was talking about the other week about the God of blackness. We so then he goes into... Um, you know, again, how you cannot support this stuff and call yourself, or well, you can call yourself. Well, I can call myself whatever I want, right? I can, <laughs> I can tell you that really I identify as a giant three-headed fire-breathing dragon named Tom. Um, but that's, okay, that's not reality though. And the reality is you can call yourself a Christian, but not be one. You can even go to church and, and participate in what he says, you know, churchianity, but you're not a Christian. And so what is the point there? Like the point there is like it's totally useless. Your your religion, your Christianity, uh, it's all useless and pointless. You might as well sleep in on Sunday. You might as well save your money. You know, go get another. You know, upgrade your level of uh, Netflix subscription because the tithe and the stuff you're putting in, it's not doing you any good. Maybe it's doing the church some good, but um, it, it's fake. It's hypocritical Christianity. Our Christianity needs to drive us to actually being Christians in all of life, in all these different spheres of our culture, of our society. And he's specifically talking about the political sphere here, but this, 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 this expands into all spheres of our society. Christians should not retract from these things. We should be at the forefront, um, really moving and, and driving these things. And I appreciate men who will come out and who will elaborate and you know take the time and have some courage to do these things. I'm sure he's gained some followers and stuff from this, but he's probably lost a lot too. He's probably had a lot of people say, oh, I can't believe you're saying that. And then he gets into this, this God of blackness thing, which I, I watched a couple of clips um, from another uh, sermon that he did where he talks about how we have, we have made this issue of race like an idol. It is like an idol. It is a god to people. And that is true. People, I mean, you can't even hardly say or do anything without like race getting inserted into it. And you've got all the DEI stuff, which is absolutely insane. Um, but this is where our culture has gotten. And Christians should never participate in this stuff. 
And if we are, we really are showing some of our colors of, yeah, I guess pun intended, <laughs> that we really are not, we're not a real Christ follower. We are getting swayed and moved around by societal shifts and societal trends. Whereas in God, the Bible says there's neither Jew nor Greek, right? Neither bond nor free, man nor woman. We are all one in Christ to, 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 to build these divisions and have either, you know, racism where it's like, I hate black people, or we have racism where it's like, well, we need to have affirmative action. We need to uh, give extras for people that are not Asian or white or whatever. They're both racist. That's both of those things are racist. And they are overly focused on something that God says, no, 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 in Christ, these distinctions, okay, there are differences, but they don't, they don't matter in God. Whether what country you're from, what uh what gender you are, right? Because there's only two: man, woman. If you're a man, you can be in Christ. If you're a woman, you can be in Christ. If you're black, white, I mean, when when I was a kid, right, we we sang that song in Sunday school. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. What happened to that? <laughs> right? what, what happened to that? Um, we need to get back to a godly uh, set of beliefs that lead to godly action. And that's what he has really hammered home. I really appreciate him for doing this. And so, again, we should be praying for men like this. I don't know everything he teaches, preaches. I mean, he might have a whole bunch of things that he and I would disagree on. But this thing right here clearly show that he's willing to step out and say, this is no good. We should be pushing and promoting things that are godly, leaning toward righteousness, leaning toward godliness. Now, maybe you don't go from, you know, abortion up to, and they, and they are. They're even pushing, um, there's, you know, laws on the books where if, if, a, if an abortion fails and the, and the child is alive, that you have to, now you have to, you know, resuscitate. Now you have to give it life-giving care. People, again, they, <laughs> I believe Tim Wall has already passed some of this stuff in his state, and of course Kamala's on board. Um, they are saying, no, nah, we, we should do away with that. That if the baby's alive, nah, just leave it, it'll die on its own. That's crazy. Now, societies have done this for forever, for millennia, right? Societies have taken those that are, uh, maybe a child is born and it looks like inferior, or it looks like it might have some problems or whatever, and just leave it out in the elements, leave it out in the, in the, in the, in the jungle or on the mountainside where a beast can come and tear it up or where it was just, it's just going to die. This is a normal practice for human beings throughout millennia. It has stopped because of Christianity in the West. And guess what? As we move away from Christianity, we're getting right back to the fact that we do not value life. You take a look at like Canada and different places. And here in the United States, people are coming more open to things like euthanasia. You get older. We don't really need you. Let's just off them. Let's give people an opportunity. Their life stinks or they think it stinks. And so let's let them uh, have doctor assisted suicide. We are seeing this stuff start to rise up in the West because we've gotten away from Christianity. And that's what this guy is saying. This is what Alton, uh, Pastor Alton here is saying. He is saying, hey, Christians, their, their Christianity, their biblical worldview should go to action and not just talk and words and sitting your behind in a specific place geographically on Sunday. And that is a, a great message. And we need to let those actions uh, take hold because of Christ, the leading of the spirit. We should now turn and we should go and do some things. So Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have a video or something you'd like me to do some commentary on or have some questions you'd like me to handle with something, I'm going to start trying to do some more of these types of uh, review videos because they give an opportunity to show things going on in the culture that I don't have to like do the whole thing. I can just look at a video and comment a little bit on it. I love it. It's great. So I hope this has been helpful. If it has, leave me a comment. Let me know. Hey, I like this kind of stuff. Um, and if you have something that you'd like us to review, you can uh, email us, podcast at breadbreakers.com or probably better hit us up on Facebook. Love y'all. God bless you. And we'll catch you on the next video.